What's going on guys, I'm the white guy, and today uh, we're going to be doing something different, we're starting a new little video series here on MX vs. ATV Supercross, I finally bit the bullet and bought some DLC, because I always said don't buy any DLC in the past, and now to try and justify that, I bit the bullet and bought some, knowing I could get Steam refunds if it doesn't work, and today we're going to be starting up a new series called Is It Worth It? for the DLC, because there's, if you add it up, there's like $80 worth of DLC for this game, which is absolutely ridiculous, it should not be anywhere near as expensive as it is to buy DLC, that's... It's really, it's insane how much this DLC costs So you start adding it together. So, like, it's ten bucks just for the Stuart compound. I'm like, no, I'm not buying that. No. If they want to send me the Stuart compound so I can review it, I'll do that. But I'm not going to pay for that to review Because all the stuff so far, I've actually, I bought all the DLC myself to review. I haven't gotten anything as a review sample of it, which would be nice if they sent me that, but I, you know, I don't think they're going to. Uh, anyway, today we're going to be looking at the two-stroke pack DLC. I also have, I bought all the Supercross tracks in one big bundle for like 20 bucks, which 20 bucks for all those Supercross tracks, that sort of almost makes sense to me. And it's like $3 per bike, which is kind of ridiculous, but the two-stroke pack is a buck ninety-nine for four bikes, so if you want to buy DLC, this is your best bang for the bucks. You get four new bikes for like three dollars, or for two or three dollars. This is the best bang for the buck. You get the Two 252 strokes right there, you get the Rainbow and the Nordic, and then you get the 500 two strokes, which I think more people would be interested in, is the 500s, and you get these two bikes, which you can customize them to look however you want, that's just how I have mine set up. And we'll start by checking out the Rainbow MX 500, just go to like a stock track, and as per update with this game happened, the, the, the Supercrosses actually do run reasonably well now, so if we go, these are all DLC Supercross tracks, by the way, those are all DLC, so we'll just go to, I don't know, let's go to just uh, Dallas. You want to just start a session here, let's do a quick little run in the 500, we'll do a run in the 250, and then I'll give my overall opinion of them, which, uh, as for, if you want DLC to add something new to the game to get you back into it, I think this is the one to get, because it's, again, best bang for the buck, you get three new bikes for, like, three dollars, as opposed to having to pay ten dollars for one single track, which is kind of ridiculous. I did, I did buy the, the free ride track for ten bucks, though, because I was sort of interested in see what that was like. But I'm not about to buy the Stuart Compound for ten dollars, so I already know what the Stuart Compound is like. And if I want the Stuart Compound without paying ten dollars, I'll go play the Reflex, because there are many versions of the Stuart Compound on Reflex for free. There's also versions of it on MX Simulator for free, so I'm not about to pay ten dollars for that. The Stuart Compound may be like four dollars, five dollars at most. The DLC in this game is mostly overpriced. This this pack made sense at the price, I understand it. The two-stroke pack makes sense, it's a good price. Every other DLC for the game is just ridiculously overpriced. I, I, if anybody from Nordic's watching, uh, consider dropping the price on some of this, please, because it's kind of... Eighty dollars worth of DLC is pretty freaking... That's, that's pretty ridiculous, and that could get dropped down to something that actually makes sense, like maybe a dollar per bike instead of three dollars. That'd be nice, and maybe say five dollars for the Stuart Compound and five dollars for the free ride track, and then the Super Cross Track Packs price makes sense enough. Maybe you think about doing that in Nordic if you're watching, because your prices are way too high on DLC right now. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the 502 stroke, and if you couldn't tell, it's 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 really it's it's pretty quick. I might have to go to a different track to show you how just absolutely fast the 500 is. It handles somewhere between a 450 and a 650 in terms of handling. Like, it's not quite as awful to handle as the 650 is, but it does, it's not as uh, smooth to flip around as the 450 is, so keep that in mind. Other thing to note now, the Supercross tracks in this game are actually running at least enough frame rates as you can hopefully see to play them with all the AI, without any AI or in multiplayer, I mean like 70 or 80 frames a second on Supercross, but uh, right now I'm getting 54, 51, 47, 53, 51... Uh, yeah, 54. So en enough to be able to play it, and uh, to a certain degree enjoy it, I guess I'd say, because the frame rate seems it's staying high enough up there to look fluid. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is just the 500 two-stroke. I probably end up closing out this lap, and we'll hop on a 250, do a couple laps on that, and then we're gonna probably just go to a quick little free ride track so I can really uh, make the point of how absolutely ridiculously fast these 500s are. It's not like the 650 where it's just like sluggish handling, you can't, like, the 650 doesn't turn like that. If, I, if this was a 650, I would not have just made that turn as smooth as I just did there. It's uh, it's like somewhere, but it's, it's like sort of the power of a 650, but not absolutely as ridiculous to turn as the 650. So the 650 has to, like, slide through everything, whereas this can just kind of actually hit rail the berms, right? Now, the frame rate does drop in a real berms like that. I don't know why it just does, which is why I was trying to avoid doing that. So we're going to get over there, single out. You can also sort of scrub on the 500s, not a ton, but you can do it to some degree. 
So yeah, we'll hop on the 252 stroke now and see what that's like, because those, the 252 strokes do handle a lot smoother and they're a lot easier to fling around than that 500 is. So if you got a customized vehicle, let's grab a, let's take the Rainbow 250, because I think it's just on the Nordic 250, so I'm going to grab that one. And let's do a single race, and let's go to like a free ride tour by ourselves so I can make the point of how much smoother this runs. There's the Copper Canyon, I did buy that all. I wasn't about to buy the Rhythm Racing Pack, because the Rhythm Racing events, those still do not run at all. So I'm going to assume that the DLC Rhythm Racing also does not run, whereas with Supercross like this, as you can now hopefully see, these actually do run reasonably well. At least... Sort of, they run all right, I should say, because I'm getting 60 frames a second right now. So they were they were they run good enough to actually enjoy playing the Supercross in this game now. So I'll change my opinion on that. See, look, you can actually make jumps. It's, these are fun. It's a 252 stroke. It's, it's fun. Uh, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh yeah, the Copper Canyon DLC. I bought. I was careful about buying extra tracks, like the stock Supercross tracks, they run all right and well now, and then the DLC Supercross tracks run even better than the stock ones, at least on my computer. For whatever reason, the DLC Supercross tracks all run 60 plus frames a second just fine, whereas the stock ones, sometimes they dip below 50. So I, I don't know what the deal with that is, but that's the thing to note, so that DLC Supercross does run better for some reason, don't know why. And uh, so I wanted to see if that DLC free ride track would run any better than the uh, the stock ones or the ones from Alive that they put into this game. And the, the DLC free ride Copper Canyon does run better, and that that, that thing's going to be its own couple videos there. That's a huge thing to cover, so look out for that in the near future. If you guys want to see the Copper Canyon DLC coverage on my channel, let me know. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just a thing to get you acquainted. I'd say this two-stroke pack is definitely, if you want something to add to the game to spice it up a bit, because you're getting bored of it, this is the thing to go with, because it's like a buck ninety-nine, best bang for the buck. And I think that's pretty much covered the DLC here. Thanks for watching, guys, and let me know if you want more DLC coverage in the future, because whether you want it or not, it's probably coming out, because uh, we're going to try and educate the consumer before they buy anything here. Thanks for watching.